Welcome back everybody to the Line Ball Pool channel. My name is Max and welcome to a really special video. In today's video, we are going to explore how three of the players within the tournament have come together, started a fantastic project to build the statistics and analysis of the Vanguard Invitational, which is the very first Line Ball Pool tournament. In this video, we are going to break down not just the stats themselves, but the journey to get here, going behind the scenes of how analysis and statistics can take place within sports, more specifically Q sports, such as line ball pool. So if you're unfamiliar with line ball, go and check out the rules video on the channel. It's called how to play line ball pool, and then check out the Vanguard Invitational. The group stage is on the channel at the moment. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in, checked out all the brilliant games. We've had such a great time. And that last game, game 15, I won't spoil it. It was so intense and has a really interesting result. So make sure you check that game out. But for today, in this game, I am joined. I say game. This isn't a game. This is a stats video. I am joined by Alex Elwood and Ardit Islami to tell us all about the stats. Also joining on the stats team was Hoi Yin Lai. Hoi is not present today, but Alex and Ardit will be speaking on Hoi's behalf on the building of this. So, um, Alex, I'd like to start just by asking you a little bit about outside of line balls. What do you do for work? What did you study? Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, uh, thanks, Max, for having me on the channel again. You know, I'm a, I'm a regular now, it seems, uh, both commentating and being in the tournament. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great pleasure to be back again. Um, what I do for work, I work as a data analyst for a company uh, who works within pensions. It, it is what gets me problem solving. and I love to do that, which is, again, why I like doing these kind of projects. Um, and then I studied at University of Kent, uh, financial mathematics, which, again, is very mathematical based, uh, a lot of applied math mathematics uh, and yeah no i i just love taking the purest like numbers and figures and turning them into visualizations and really sharing with people what the numbers actually mean in you know layman's terms not not just figures on a spreadsheet kind of thing yeah fantastic and so Ardit, can you tell us a little bit about yourself hi everyone my name is Ardit, and for myself i come from more of a data science background a bit different from data analysis more machine learning, more stats based, just more purely mathematical in that sense. Same with uh, Alex, we know each other from our maths background, me coming from our more purely maths uh, side of things. So more stats focused, but yeah, both uh, heavily on data, very much enjoy all this. And yeah, it was very fun collecting all this data. So good fun uh, being part of this. Lovely. So uh, to dive a little bit further into it, we built, I say we, I didn't do any of the building. <laughs> the team built this fantastic spreadsheet, which breaks down all the stats of all the players, of all the teams, how they performed in different departments and tries to make it as visually as sort of appealing as possible and sort of make sense to everyone. So before we jump into the sort of individual stats and how it all works, Alex, could you tell me a little bit about the beginning of this process because you know once we got talking as a team about wanting to do the stats for the tournament we had to start somewhere so can you tell me about the beginning yeah um the beginning was a very exciting process because you know we were sat there straight after the actual tournament ourselves thinking hang on a minute this has real potential for making a good project and like doing something that would aid the, ch the channel in seeing actually who was playing better who was you know maybe not doing the best shots and all, all that so we we sat there and we thought about what kind of statistics we could actually track um and we had quite a few ideas that didn't make the cut in the end such as like geolocation we'd like to see on average maybe who shot in different quarters of the the table more uh, that would have been interesting um simply because of what we were given as in like the the video format it wasn't always easy to do that kind of analysis and we did opt for looking well re-watching the videos um and just tracking things like attacking shots defending shots all things that like are quite difficult and subjective so we, we had to like the initial process was just thinking of what things we want to track 
then writing definitions that are, you know, objective. You can't have like one definition for a tax shot and another. You know, we then once we got those kind of definitions, we we started making well, Hoy, uh, big props to Hoy for doing this. He he made this big uh, spreadsheet that tracked all these stats, and that's when we started checking and thinking, all right, this is ready to go. And yeah, me and I started uh, collating the data, which is what you'll see in today's video. Super. And you mentioned in there the definition. So I'm just going to move over to the definition slide now to sort of break them down. And for the definitions of this, it's going to make a lot more sense if you've seen or watched any of the line ball videos. So if you've made it this far already and you've not watched a full game of line ball, I'd recommend watching a game just to get a sense of all the rules so you get an understanding of what everything means. But Ardit, do you want to go through briefly a little bit about the descriptions, how you define them, and how you landed on this set of you know descriptions to track like why did you track these yeah of course max so in terms of the definitions it's quite a laborious process because most of the time as alex has mentioned it ends up being quite subjective and actually as we tracked data we redefined a lot of these uh definitions uh one example was if we look at uh the legal shots where we read a shot that does not concede a frame Specifically, we specify at the time of the shot being taken. Sometimes uh, a certain variable could change after the shot is taken, and that can make it even more subjective. And so that was the case of we had to go down the list, try to figure out what the best idea is for each variable. Then we created a set of uh, sub uh, uh, variables, such as good shot, neutral shot, unforced all depending on it being a legal shot, for example. And furthermore, attack shots, attack shot enhance and perfect. But we further define the fact that some players attempted attacks and they failed. Some people attempted attacks that succeeded, but weren't perfectly out of play. And hence we go to the perfect shots, which perfectly removes a ball out of play. And that was that for the legal shots. And we also wanted to track further with how many balls go into the zone, how many balls go out of the zone, and even consider a shot taken by a player bringing in uh, an opponent ball in or bringing an opponent ball out of play. Uh, other than that, we, we define further defensive shots, which uh, depends on the next shot taken by the opponent. If that ball is not removed out of play by the opponent, that previous shot becomes a defensive shot. Uh, shots that ride the line, we go into Shots that just fractionally stay in the zone, but are still in play. Um, we also try to consider cushion contacts. I think if all the viewers that have watched the video so far have noticed that uh, some players tend to stick to the cushions and that dampens the power of the shot. Uh, we wanted to consider which players uh, touch the cushions more over the periods of the games. Some uh, players went down the middle and that led to more neutral shots uh, and it seems that players that uh, went for more cushion shots they tended to uh, get better good shots the shots that stayed in the zone um, and further from that is more such as game losing shots and frames that made it to shot 7 those are self-explanatory but aren't important in the more grand discussion of our stats a great description of our definitions um, one of the challenges that we faced with these definitions is finding definitions that would make them mutually exclusive meaning that you know for example with the attack shots it couldn't be an attack shot and an attack shot enhanced it had to be um, one or the other so that when we did the total stats if you added the, all the attack shots up it wouldn't add up to more than they actually did in the tournament uh, so that was something that we looked into quite a lot yeah, I think that's really interesting because when you look at sporting in general now, um, any sort of li live sports, but also sort of pre-recorded sporting pieces, you'll always see these stat card uh, stat card pieces come up with information about players, whether it's footballers and shot percentages, um, or maybe snooker and um, all the shot types they have. So with line ball, because it's a new sport and there's so many variables on the table you've had to put a lot of effort into sort of making these definitions from scratch because we don't have official names for them so 
What this is going to allow us to do for future line ball tournaments is we'll be able to integrate this language into the commentary so that when commentators are talking about the statistics and mentioning certain types of shots, we are now going to have key terms that we will be able to add to the line ball pool dictionary that will help us identify what each type of shot will be. And I find it very interesting that a certain shot had to appear as one or the other. So that summarizes it for the definitions of what each type of shot is. And now as we head over to the player cards, this has really enabled you to sort of visualize what you were talking about in the descriptions. So Alex, as we jump into this, can you just tell me what I'm looking at firstly? Yeah, um, so what you're looking at right now is more of a summary of our stats. So we have right, more dedicated spreadsheets that we use to track the stats. And this here is kind of a breakdown of the results that we got for those. The, you know, the shots that we find would be interesting for the viewers. Um, so we've got our legal shots, which are shots that, you know, didn't lose someone the frame. Uh, illegal shots being the opposite of that. Total shots in general is just all the shots that they did in the tournament. Accuracy, which we defined as the, you know, the good shots that they took, meaning it went into their end zone compared to the shots that didn't quite go in the end zone. Um, the attacking shots, so how uh, dangerous of a player they are, if you reckon if you went against them, they would try and get your ball out of the zone. Um, and game losing shots uh, was quite well, explanatory, but you know it, it does help to track that kind of thing to see who's making more mistakes and who's got that kind of... Um, liability in the team, I guess. One thing I find very interesting, Alex, is the sort of narrative and extra comments field, because it allows me, as someone who doesn't really know much about stats, to better understand what it all means. So um, perhaps we take it maybe two teams at a time. Mm -hmm. Ardit, do you think you could go through Team Alice and Maximum Impact in the group stages here, and mm -hmm. what the information relating to values narrative and comments tells me about each team that the most interesting facts because as we know at the end of the group stage maximum impact finishing um and, and we're going to be getting into spoiler territory here so if you haven't seen the end of the group stage go and watch it first because we'll get into spoilers but as a, as i was saying maximum impact finishing first place and alex um alice finishing in fifth are can you tell me about what the stats tell me yeah, if we start with Team Alice, we can see that Team Alice has one of the higher amount of total shots. You can see that the amount of legal shots amount to 110. If we quickly compare that to maximum impact, their legal shots uh, amount to 50. Uh, it just goes to show that a lot of Team Alice's games tended to drag all the way till the seventh shot, uh, meaning they in total took more shots. Uh, usually that would suggest that they played safer. And it probably also suggests that their uh, opponents played safer as well due to that playstyle. Uh, compared to Maximum Impact, who has less shots, uh, less shot usually means that they played against opponents who ended up making mistakes early on, hence they ended up not collecting shots of all, which could in a sense impact our sense of where each player is. With less shots taken, it's hard to see how good of a player they are compared to some with more shots where we have more data. Um, in that amount of sense, we can see that uh, you, Max, you have quite a few uh, attacking shots compared to your total amount of shots. I think in proportional terms, you have the most attacks. In that sense, you are the most aggressive player out of most mm -hmm. of these teams, for example. Uh, if we go further from that, we see that Team Alice also had a fair amount of attacks. But proportion to their amount of shots, it's uh, quite little. So it is not to, they're quite a safe team. Their, they, their play style is slow compared to uh, maximum impact. Their play style being aggressive, fast, and uh, re resulting in opponents that ended up making mistakes compared to Team Alice, uh, inducing other players to play as safe as them. Um, we can go to Red Hot Chili Peppers next. A team that equally played as slow as Team Alice, uh, you can see that their total shots is nearly the same as Team Alice. 
But unfortunately, their stats or their accuracy ended up being much lower, actually amounting the amount of good shots they took over any other type of shot, type of legal shot. Uh, we see that their attacks didn't amount too much, but Brandon actually took quite a few attacking attempts, attacking eight times compared to Max who attacked nine times. Again, compared to his total amount of shots, 53, that doesn't amount to too much, but I believe we can see uh, Brandon's accuracy at 49, and our extra common being that he's the only player at 50% accuracy or below it, uh, suggests that uh, he might have attacked quite aggressively, resulting in more mistakes uh, compared to Timmy, who ended up being a very l l low attacking player which probably impacted his accuracy. It kept his accuracy a bit higher than Brandon's. He only took one attack total, which means he took safer shots and more shots landing in the zone means higher accuracy. Um, in that sense, a very safe team. They played slow. They played slow like Alice. And in that sense, it contributed to their current stats. Ardit, I think what's very interesting that you mm -hmm. pointed out with those first three is the the teams that are playing some of the most shots and arguably working the hardest are the teams that ended up finishing quite low because mm -hmm. you know the red hot chili potters finished bottom of the group alice mm -hmm. only just above them uh, and these were the two teams playing the most line ball and uh, mm -hmm. clearly taking risks and having sort of lower accuracy whereas my my accuracy personally in, in maximum impact is a, a lot higher and we ended up finishing around the top. So, yeah, it's very interesting that just because you play a lot on the table doesn't necessarily mean that it translates to uh, high-quality results. So thank you for that, Ardit. We're going to move on to the next three teams then, um, and we're going to move back to Alex to give us a little explanation as to what we're seeing with Daddy's Clackers, who finished third in the group, Line Aid, who finished fourth, Yeah, so interestingly enough, these, these three teams for me are very interesting to watch, just not looking at the stats. If you watch the games, they're very interesting players to, to watch for just how they play. They've got, they all got very different uh, game styles um, and you can really see that with Daddy's Clackers because you've got John who he, he's quite a powerful player. He does, he does do a fair few attacking shots as we can see. He's got nine total attacks. And out of those attack, uh, nine attacks, he's done two perfect shots, meaning he's got the, those two balls out completely out of the play, which uh, is quite difficult to do. Um, and it's something that John is stronger at out of this out of the player base in this tournament. Uh, and then we've got Anki Dams, who um, he is a really good player. We've seen him qu quite often uh, take neutral shots from you know John and other players and put them into the end zone. However, we've noticed he is a very risky player and it, that, that does show in his kind of accuracy uh, that he has a bit lower accuracy due to that. He, you know, he takes those risks and sometimes it doesn't pay off. Sometimes it really does. Um, but that, that's why they are so interesting to watch. And then we see Lion Aid, which is my and team. Uh, so we try not to be biased here, um, but Line Aid, uh, they did place, I think, fourth in the in the rankings. Uh, that that is not particularly great. It's you know less than average. But looking at the stats, you can see that uh, myself, Alex, um, I did get quite a high accuracy, but I also did just as many uh, attacking shots as John. Um, so you know, in that sense, I took more attacks uh, and. I still managed to keep my accuracy high, meaning uh, you know, if you could collate that, that to being better at attacks, but also we we did end up taking more game losing shots, uh, so that isn't isn't ideal there. Uh, and then you look at Ardit, Ardit has the highest uh, player accuracy, meaning that he will nine times out of ten, well obviously more less than that, but just, just for the sake of it, nine times out of ten get the ball into the end zone which is reliable and it's really hard to beat a player who is most of the time getting in the end zone. If you're making silly mistakes, he will punish you for not being completely accurate. So that's that's what Line A's strengths were. 
Um, unfortunate that they couldn't get higher in the uh, the rankings there. And then we've got our final team, Wet Bandits, who did exceptionally well in the group stage, um, especially as this is their, their first time um, playing the line ball in general. That, that day, neither of them played it before. Uh, so we've got Hoi Yin Lai, um, who he did quite a lot of, well, both of them did quite a lot of shots in general. I think um, overall, Wet Bandits did maybe the third amount of highest shots. Uh, I think tied, maybe tied with Daddy's Clackers, actually, looking at it. Um, but overall, they had the lowest team accuracy. Uh, I can, as I say, it's kind of you can see that that's just them being new to the game. But um, you can see that, like, Byron actually didn't take that many um, game losing shots at all. So it, it does go to show that sometimes just because you've got low accuracy and maybe higher shots doesn't mean that you're going to be bad. You've, it, it's up to your opponents to, to make the mistakes in those cases. Um, yeah, I think that overall they're a very solid team um, and we can see that just by they've got a lot of attacks, they've got an average kind of well, a bit average KD, which we defined as, you know, the legal shots to illegal shots. Um, and yeah, overall, they're just really fun to watch. Yeah, that's really interesting. And Alex, before we go back to Ardit, I wanted to ask you about this KD stat. So can you tell me what it's defined as, what it means um, before we move on? Yeah, see, this is one of the, the newer stats that's kind of a bit more experimental. Um, we we haven't like defined we haven't necessarily like said it's going to be called kd it it was just named after the kind of call of duty um stat you would have that shows you your kills your deaths um we we looked at it as a good track to see what players were making more legal shots to compare to their illegal shots and the, the lower your kd means the i guess the more you are well, it, it could indicate this. It could indicate that the more that you're losing your team. But yeah, it, it does. It could mean that they're not an attacking player. Um, and that is somewhat what we see. But it also could mean that overall, they're more reliable at getting the ball where it needs to be and not losing a point for their team. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, Alex, the, uh, the team with the highest accuracy finished in a below average position. So yeah, there's there's something very curious about you don't necessarily have to be accurate to win the games it's about sort of being ruthless when you can with the attack shots but also just not having those unforced errors and mistakes so yeah that's a, a really interesting thing to take into the uh, knockout stage of this tournament as we see which teams progress obviously going into the knockouts the red hot chili potters have been eliminated as they finished uh, bottom of the group all the rest of the teams do have a chance to win although um, line aid and alice because they finished lower in the group they're going to have a much longer journey to get further along we are next going to head into individual teams and this is where if i take it back to the top and the front things start to get really interesting as we break down the real deep stats that allowed those really nice player cards you saw a moment ago to be created this is the detail um so before we go into specifics for the teams um Ardit, would you mind just sort of talking through what i'm seeing here i mean if we start off from the top uh what you're seeing in the top and individual stats is most likely just basically what you saw in the player cards so it's basically the total amounts of all the detail that you'll see just further below in just a moment uh you see all the cumulative legal shots players took as a team and individually all their illegal all their good shots are neutral everything that we further defined just earlier in our definitions tab uh probably best for us to scroll down just to show how all these things accumulate as you can see we also separated by game so if anyone wants to scroll through see how each team did per game you could probably also consider how each team improved per game where you see that overall maybe they took more good shots as the games uh, went on because their skills improved 
uh, that's a good statistic to see whether that comparison is there. For example, uh, game five, total amount of legal shots was 30 over 19 good shots. That's a pretty solid statistic. They took a decent amount of good shots over the total shots. And that's probably something that we see across all teams where as they progress each game, they would probably take more good shots, supposedly. And uh, if this is, becomes public, publicly available, very good stuff for our uh, uh, watchers to see. Very, very interesting. We'd love to start sharing these documents so you can start to go through all of the statistics. We haven't talked about it in a ton of detail, but the documents won't be available to view yet as we still need to do the statistics for the knockout stage. However, after the knockout stage, we'll have a discussion as a team and see what we'll be able to make available. So if you're interested in looking deeper into the stats of this tournament, then drop a comment, let us know, and um, we can arrange some time to talk with the team, go through the stats, learn a bit more, as this is really designed to be a behind the scenes look, because when you see those stats on screen when you're watching your favorite sports and you have those cards come up with all this information and it looks nice and pretty on screen, this is the kind of data that is driving what you're seeing. So as we come down to this lower screen, as we look into individual frames of individual games, um, Alex, talk me through this. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, there is quite a lot going on here. And to somebody who's not seen this spreadsheet, uh, as most of the viewers won't have, um, it does look too much, really. Um, but what we've done is we've decided to um, mark each of the different shots by their definitions marking if it was that as a one and if it wasn't in that category as a zero uh, that way when we come to do full visualizations which i'm sure we will do in the future we can use these ones and zeros to make very nice smooth graphs um, and we've also got uh, an index there which uh, for the more data nerdy people out there uh, will be used to um, kind of track what what games and what um, frames we're analysing. So we could maybe analyse per game, per frame, per player, that that kind of thing. Um, so like each of these are drop downs, and what we did to collect the data was we would watch the um, match and we would go, all right, that's a legal shot. We put that as a one. Uh, if it was a legal shot then it can't be an illegal shot so the other one was a zero and we'd go across to the end uh, and we'd mark down the cushion contacts uh, and whether it was a game losing shot or it wasn't a game losing shot and depending on what kind of shot it was we would put in a little comment so later on we can refer to it in these kinds of videos or just in general so we can keep a track of what kind of games there were and how well the team was uh, playing yeah it just seems so time consuming as well to go through every single shot, to go through all the details and marking off if every shot of the whole tournament fit all of these different conditions. So Ardit, just from a sort of practical and times perspective, can you tell me what it was like to do this process? Because as someone who isn't super interested in numbers, <laughs> this sounds like a big job. Yeah, initially it was quite laborious. I think the fact that we did it as a two-man job, a uh, three-man job if you consider uh, Hoi Lai who created this whole Excel. Me and Alex, we decided to take one team each as two teams played in a game. And as the video progressed, we paused if we needed and we took our details. And the fact is that as you start taking a lot of these zeros and ones, you start getting faster and faster at it. So in a way, you sort of take enjoyment uh, of watching the shots, getting frustrated with it, something mistake, or getting excited when you see an uh, interesting thing happen. So you have to just kind of delve in, uh, get absorbed by just watching the videos and just taking a bunch of stats. And I think the fact that we enjoy taking stats makes this exciting because as we progressed, we sort of built on insights of each player and realized, oh, this player takes a lot of these shots and we already know how, how they're going to play and so it was quite interesting but laborious and also fun as you went on um, in its own way so yeah 
Brilliant. And um, for those of you wondering what the future of our sort of stat taking will be, to take the stats for this tournament, what we had to do was retrospectively watch the videos of the games. And I know that Alex and Ardit, something you're looking into is for the next tournament, having a, and Hoy as well, having a more real time look at that. So it's easier to do it in the moment. So there's not all this extra time that you're going to have to put into things. And um, before we get into the next bit, I wanted to say that in the comments of each of the videos, what we want to try and do is start to put the descriptions of some of these statistics. So if you head down to the comment sections of some of the previous line ball videos, you're going to start to see some of these stats presenting themselves for each of the players, just so that you can get a little bit more depth. If you don't see it in there yet, check back in soon and it might be in there. We're just starting to do that with some of the sort of basic statistics that we're getting in here. For the next tournament, we are going to integrate the stat cards into the video. So you actually get a sense of the statistics whilst you're watching it. The commentators will be able to refer to them. And that's one part of what we want to do for the next tournament. So Alex, just to go back to you, can you tell me a little bit about what you want to do for the future of line ball based and sporting based statistics? Yeah, that's a very good question, Max. Um, and something that we've discussed uh, as a group quite a lot. Um, you see, like, because of what we've learned in this process, we've realized there are things that we streamline, there's some things that we'd like to take better account of during the tournament, like, like for example, the geolocation of where that, that ball lands on the, on the table. Um, and yeah, just in general, I think we want to use add more definitions and if anyone has any suggestions of things we can track or things they'd find interesting we're more than happy to take suggestions uh, and learn more uh, i think that definitely part of the the process here is is learning what it is like to track sports statistics and what people find interesting um so yeah we we've got a lot even coming up with the stats here we we're thinking about doing um tables and graphs to show uh, players and like improvements and you know the the different kind of oh this um this kind of shot leads to a better overall performance um that that kind of really in-depth analysis we're going to try and do and hopefully make a in interesting report that can be read back um and really show what it is that makes line ball so interesting and so uh, difficult slash, well, I, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I'd say so interesting to improve on. It's it's always, line ball's always improving. I'm sure in the next tournament, we'll see shots that were 10 times as good as the, the best shots in this tournament. It's, it's a growing sport and tracking that growth is something that is going to be really interesting for me particularly, but I'm sure Ardit could agree with the, what I'm saying. 100%. Yeah, and uh, obviously the stats uh, have already growing. Like you say, you've been developing what the definitions have been and the different stats you're tracking even since when we started doing this. So if you, as the viewer of this video, um, it's almost basically a podcast at this point, but as the viewer of this video are enjoying and are impressed by what Hoy, Alex and Ardit have done, maybe you are involved in the planning of a tournament of some kind of description in the world of sport, and you're interested in talking to them about more about potentially using their services to start doing analysis of the sporting event or any other industry. As we've said, um, Arda and Alex and Hoy all do this stuff outside of the world of sport as part of their day job. So if you're interested in speaking to them more in terms of each of their niches within data collecting analysis, what I'll do is I'll put the LinkedIn contacts for them in the description and the comments of this video. So if you want to speak to any of the team, you can go down there, you can find their details, or just leave us a comment, message the page. I know all of the guys will be in the comments of this video answering any of your questions as well. So if you have questions, leave them there. The team, all of us will be back in touch. So to close off the video, let's do a fun bit. We have each picked out, the three of us, our favorite shot of the group stage. Now, that might change when it comes to the knockout stage as the teams have to pick up their quality for the uh, 
difficult games ahead, but we've all picked out our favorite favorite shot of the tournament. Mm-hmm. So, Ardit, let's start with you. Oh, what was your mine's... favorite shot and why? Mine's fascinating. It's an elusive shot. Uh, comes from uh, Team Alice on their fourth game against Red Hot Chili Potters. Matija takes his first shot, or their first shot, and uh, as the shot progresses towards the uh, end of the table, it suddenly just picks up a bit of speed, moves to the side, making you think if a ghost uh, moved the ball. It could be a dip in the table, it could be a ghost, we don't know. It's just a fascinating little shot that you could barely see just tinged to the side uh, with more speed than you should have. Um, was very uh, weird to see when we were collecting the data. I think that's one of my favorite shots uh, that I saw. And uh, yeah, that shot coming in just not quite in time for Halloween to, to do this, <laughs> but having spooky forces enacting on the game of line ball. But a really interesting shot there to choose, Ardit. Thank you for sharing that. And don't forget, head back on the channel. You'll be able to see all of the games that we've talked about in this video and overlaid with some of the statistics. I'm sure you've been enjoying some of the highlights of line ball. So Alex, let's move on to yourself next. What was yours? Yeah, so again, I don't really want to be biased. Uh, because I am part of Team Line Aid and yeah, my favourite shot is myself in Team Line Aid. Um, I know, I know, it's uh, it's not great, but I personally really liked watching this back and remember how good it made me feel. So I can't help but say it was my the the shot that I liked was Line Aid versus Daddy's Clackers, um, and it was the fourth frame, and it was my first shot. Uh, essentially. I managed to hit it off of two cushions and then it was so fractionally close to the black ball that I was almost certain that I'd just lost us the, the, the ref frame there. So like the fact that I didn't and it was that close, it was really amazing to see uh, both recorded and in person. No, brilliant. And uh, I, I would say that that's very uh, vain to choose your own shot, but I'm going to be choosing my own one as well. So I can't really put it past you too much. But that's a, a really great shot because it's a combination of how risky the play was, but also the reward that you gained from it too. So my favorite shot also being me was um, in game 12, which was myself, uh, Maximum Impact versus Daddy's Clackers. It was our fourth game of the tournament. The score is currently 1-1 in the third... Oh, no. Well, it's 1-1 on points, but it's the very first frame of the match. And uh, I'm taking sort of a, an angle to hit a power shot to knock one of their yellows completely out of play. It was right on the edge of zone. Very easy for them to bring in. I power shot it with a lot of backspin, which just means my red squeezes past the black ball and nestles nicely in the bottom left-hand corner and the yellow ball flies up the table. It's a really nice shot because if I don't hit it with the correct backspin, the uh, red ball would have just gone straight into the black and lost me the frame. So a very nice point there for myself personally. I'm quite happy with it. So um, do let us know in the comments what your favourite shot of the tournament was. If you've made your way through every episode of the group stage and then through the whole way of this video, I respect you. That's a lot of line ball content to be going through. So uh, thank you for joining us on the journey. And what is effectively part one of our stats video for line ball. We will be doing this all over again in even more detail for the knockout stages. So check out that video. It's going to be coming out on the 19th of December. That will be the next stats video you see. But between now and the 19th of December, you will see all of the great line ball content for the knockout stage of the tournament right in time for Christmas. What better way to celebrate Christmas than with a line ball stats video under the tree? So Alex, Ardit, we'll start with you, Ardit, first. Do you have any final comments about the stats or anything we've discussed to close? Honestly, Max, thanks so much for having me on this. Honestly, on the tournament, I had a lot of fun. Uh, playing all these games, collecting this data was also a lot of fun. Uh, having this as part of my one of my projects, uh, I'm very proud to be part of this, basically. And yeah, uh, that's that's it. That's my closing comment. Uh, thank you for having me. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Ard. Great to have you a part of it and to dedicate so much of your time to building the stats as well. I'm excited to see how your team does in the rest of this tournament mm -hmm. and then on to our second tournament as well. I hope you can really dig yourself out of the trenches of the sort of lower group stage finish. So we will see indeed. And uh, Alex, what about yourself? I'd just like to say um, thanks again, Max, for having me. Um, and also for those real fans out there, They'll know that this is Ardit's second appearance on the channel. Uh, his first being in the very first video um, <laughs> that me and Hoy commentated. Um, thanks, Ardit, for, for joining that as well. And he was also <laughs> in uh, Pot or Not. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend go seeing that because there will be a second one as far as I'm aware. Um, and yeah, it, I just really enjoyed this process and can't wait to, to see what happens next with it. Thank you, Alex. Yes, let us know in the comments if you want to bring back Pot or Not. It was one of the lower view videos on the channel from the early days. So if you want Pot or Not to come back, you've got to watch them. You've got to go and watch Pot or Not. Uh, and Ardit does make a hilarious appearance in that. So if you're interested, <laughs> head back to Pot or Not. What, what a throwback that is for the channel. Um, but no, thank you both for your time for not just building this, but being here on the video tonight as well. And to Hoy, who even though Hoy hasn't been in the video at all, he has been the beating heart behind this process, helping to build this data sheet from the ground up so that Alex and Ardit could populate it and do the great work they do. So again, head to the description and comments, add them on LinkedIn, have a conversation if you're interested, because if you've clicked on a video about sporting statistics, you're going to want to have a conversation with these guys. This is a fantastic project that we could talk about for hours. So the fact we've kept this under an hour is impressive. Uh, and as I said, it's basically turned into a podcast episode. Um, and don't forget, we'll be uploading line ball episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. UK time. And uh, that will be up until the 19th of December. We'll then be taking a bit of a break over the sort of Christmas period, coming back in the new year with just weekly videos, videos coming out every Tuesday at 6. We'll be dropping back to the weekly format. But what we aim to do in the new year for subsequent videos and then the second tournament is to have an even more refined even better made tournament in terms of statistics camera angles player stories so we've really enjoyed this process but line ball's only going to get better and better in 2024 and to do that we're going to have slightly less videos so that we can focus on the quality going up so thank you again for watching. I'm Max. I'm the creator of Lineball and the channel and the tournament and sadly one of the players in the tournament. And uh, we'll see you all on the next episode, which will be the very first game of the knockout stage. Ooh. So enjoy that. It will be out at 6 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. Check it out. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe because we need subscribers to do what we do. And you don't want to miss these episodes. You really don't. Exciting so check stuff. it out. Very exciting indeed. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye all.